Generations of Americans yet to come will see advances beyond our imaginations. It's a future that's theirs to create. Now, our way of life was made possible by the Constitution, which established a system of government based on individual rights and freedoms. Now, that system, established 200 years ago, remains viable today. Now, these freedoms will lead to even more innovations that will enhance the enjoyment of our lives. Now, we all have dreams, right? Right? Yes, Mr. Yes, we're all free to dream. But freedom itself is not free, and it must be protected from those who want to take it away from us. Now, along with the topic of the Constitution and our freedoms, I want to talk a little bit about patriotism. Now, who here knows what it means to be patriotic? Like, doesn't it mean that you wear flags or something? I don't know. Not quite, Christy, but good try. According to Webster's Dictionary, patriotism is having love for one's country or showing love and support for one's own country. Very good, Manny. Very impressive. Okay, let's try and imagine how our very first president, George Washington, would describe patriotism. Bernard, sit oh, down. Miss, sit it's, it's, down. It's, it's, Class, calm down. Calm down. Uh, no. Mr. President is just here to explain the Constitution. There's no need to get hysterical. It's not it's hysterical. <laughs> Mr. President, please. Ms. Scott, students, patriots are people who support the principles of the foundation of our government, who feel strongly about those principles, strong enough to support and defend the Constitution and the freedoms it represents against all enemies, both domestic and foreign. Mr. President, I'm sure these kids want to know how it all came about. How did we in America get these freedoms? In 1776, after years of oppression by King George III of England, the American colonists decided to take the drastic measure of declaring their independence, establishing the United States of America as a country based upon individual freedoms. After a long war, independence was won, and a new form of government by the people and for the people was formed when the Constitution was written and ratified, stating, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, and to promote the general welfare, and to secure the blessings of liberty for ourselves and our posterity, hereby ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. So as I understand it, the Declaration of Independence stated our right to determine our own destiny. It said we are all created equal, and we are endowed by our Creator with certain unalienable rights that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's right, Ms. Scott. Our Constitution establishes our freedom, our liberties, and lays out the structure for our government. But when the Constitution was written, several patriots, including Patrick Henry, were very concerned that it did not contain a specific list of freedoms that were protected. Compromises had to be reached in order to gain the support needed in order to get the required number of states, nine, to ratify the Constitution. And this is how the first ten amendments, the Bill of Rights, came into being. Okay, so does anybody know who Patrick Henry is? <laughs> Manny, why don't you go ahead and stand up for the class and tell him who Patrick Henry is. Simon, I know that dude. He's one of the main vatos who led the movement to attain the Bill of Rights. He was an OG. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it. For I not know what course others may take. But as for me, give me liberty or give me death. 
Patrick Cannon. Wow. Fantastic, Manny. Miss Scott, uh, don't try to tell me that Patrick Henry's about to come up in here, too. I know, that's crazy. <laughs> that'll just be crazy. Ne count. Never mind. Well, take a look right there. Mr. President, Miss Scott, thanks for inviting me to be part of this uh, discussion that you're having today. You know, that young man at the back of the room did a fairly good job of, of, of what I had said, but I said it more like this. Is life so dear or peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery? Forbid it, almighty God. I know not what course others may take, but as for me, Give me liberty or give me death. You know, after your constitution went to, going through the stage of being adopted, I became very, very concerned. Many other founding fathers were afraid of this document because it did not contain a listing of individual freedoms. Now, those who favored the constitution thought these freedoms were understood. I was concerned that future generations might be trampled under by a despotic federal government. History has proven that some of my concerns and others of the Founding Fathers were valid. Now who would like to help me make a listing of these ten amendments which you now know as the Bill of Rights? <laughs> well I can see that I'm on my own here. Well, your First Amendment guarantees you the right to freedom of speech, religion, the right to peacefully assemble, and the right to, pro to protest against your government if you feel your rights have been violated. The Second Amendment gives you the right to bear arms. The Third Amendment establishes freedom from having to house a soldier in your home unless in time of war. The Fourth Amendment protects America from becoming a police state. Citizens are protected in their homes from unreasonable searches. A warrant must be issued for probable cause. The Fifth and Sixth Amendment has become known as the I plead the Fifth, Double Jeopardy, or Due Process Amendments. They must warn you if you're going to be arrested. You are read your rights. You call this today the Miranda Rights. You have the right to a fair and speedy trial and to know what the charges are against you. The Seventh Amendment reserves the right to a trial by a jury in a civil case. And the Eighth Amendment gives you protection from excessive bail, fines, and cruel and unusual punishment. The Ninth Amendment basically says that if some of the rights haven't been named, it doesn't mean that you do not have those rights. And the Tenth and Final Amendment says that all the rights that are not reserved to the federal government are reserved to the states. If Patrick Henry and others didn't fight to get the Bill of Rights added, our country could have turned out very differently. Some amendments were passed after the Bill of Rights were added to correct injustices that were overlooked by our Founding Fathers. Like what, Ms. Scott? Well, like slavery. The Founders allowed that to continue because they couldn't agree on it. So the country had to fight a civil war before that practice was outlawed with the passage of the 13th Amendment. Now, soon following, the right to vote, regardless of race, color, gender, and age, was also added. And along with those freedoms come some responsibilities. As Americans, we have responsibilities to our community and to our nation. And first among these is the necessity of being responsible citizens, students, and patriots. It means we should be taking advantage of all educational opportunities to learn as much as possible so you guys can become anything you want to be. What do you guys dream of becoming? I want to be a scientist. I want to be an engineer. Makeup artist. A statesman. Okay, so no offense, Miss Scott and um, Mr. President, but this all sounds real old-fashioned to me. I mean, a lot has changed since 1776. It doesn't seem like we even need patriotism and the Constitution anymore. 
Some people may try to convince you of that. But the fact is, we need it now more than ever before. There continues to be challenges to our way of life and to our freedoms. Does anybody know how we can lose our freedoms? The only way that we can lose our freedoms is if we let it happen. Exactly, Manny. Only if we let it happen. By not appreciating the freedoms we have and for failing to stand up to protect them. 